I never want to see my screen. We can see your screen, but uh, we are seeing yes. Telegram. What can you see? Your Telegram. Um, really? If you're going through your Telegram messages. Okay, I'm showing the other screen. Uh -oh. Okay. I think that's fine, man. I'll take it back. What about now? Yeah, we can see now. Uh, da -da -da. What can you see still? Yeah, we can see Blue Sky Citadel now. Okay. I'm trying to set it up so that I, I can see if anybody hands are up. Anyway, um, my name is Emmanuel. I'm going to be taking you through the use case today. Welcome, uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. Ah, I don't like a situation where I cannot see people. Uh, let me see if I can reset. Maybe you should uh, maybe exit a uh, full screen. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I want to see. Oh, is it is it on record now? I believe. Yeah, it's on record. So I have to watch what I see. Hmm? So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Emmanuel. Um, I'm a business analyst, just like you. Huh? So I'm going to take you, taking you through the use case. Yeah. What are not like me? I'm an SMO. What, what are you guys doing here? What's SM doing here? Uh, mm -hmm. Like this is a lecture for um what? for BA. ADM, SM. APM, and SM. Okay. Yeah. Are we not supposed to be here? We are all going to benefit from it. Is SM not to be here? We are supposed to be here. I said, I don't go anywhere. Uh, uh, okay. Hey, Job, but you said, what is SM doing here now? <laughs> no, I'm just informing him that okay, SMs are here, okay. not only BAs. We have SMs, ADMs, APMs. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let, let me put it like this. Yeah, it's good that everyone is here. If you are a BA, yeah, I want to see the numbers. If you can indicate by raising up your hand, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. We are 27 here, just six BA here. That's interesting. I counted eight. I counted eight also. Yeah, if you if you take eight off twenty-eight, because now we're now twenty-eight. Now they are nine. But very encouraging. Okay, nine. Mm. Okay. Anyway, that's fine. Um is an advantage for the SM. And um who else is here? ADMs. The ADMs is advantage for you. Um you get to know some things that the BAs do, and that will be another advantage for you because you can talk about it. Plus, you might be asked, yeah? Okay. If you have an idea, you might support your team or guide your team, yeah? Yeah. Coach your team, yeah? And, you know, doing some of this stuff. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. this is your advantage. For the BAs, this is um part of your um documentation in terms of requirements. Yeah. So I won't waste much time because it's more practical than theory. <clears throat> Can everyone still see my screen? Yes. Yeah. 
Do it and still see your screen. Yes, so we are there. All right. Do we all know what a use case is? Let me start from there. What do we think a use case is? At least we'll have a definition in front of us. Yeah? For the BA, let's talk. So um, use case, my name is Moyo. Um, use Are you case, a BA, first of all? Yes, I am. OK, good. Um, use cases are. Uh, you know, diagrammatic representation of how a user interacts with um, a system, or you call a, an IT system, sorry, a web system. In okay. short, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, This is it, yeah. Have we looked into, have we read anything about use case before coming here? Let's be honest. Yes, no, yes, no, it's okay. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. That's more you're speaking, right? Okay. Are we familiar with this? Yes. Yeah. So you've already, you know, the background of your project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've passed that stage, right? We understand, we know who our stakeholders are. Yeah. Yes. We've looked at the constraint, the assumptions. That's okay. Let, let, let's let's put it like this. Yeah. Uh, let's see how many minutes I have. I'm going to run through this thing very quick. Yeah, but I, I want us. I want. I want us to engage. Let's see. I want to know where we are so that I know how to come. Where where to ha where to come from? Yeah. Uh, Emmanuel, sorry, can I say something? Yes, go on. Um, probably for the BAs, they understand, but for somebody like me, if I'm speaking for some maybe SMs and um, others, we are like new to this. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. um, but you are not new to, you've heard where they talk about documenting requirements. I know of what document means. I know what require what requirement means. Exactly. <laughs> so join it together. Requirement <laughs> documents. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So but first, when you get into a project, you want to find out, okay, what exactly is the project? Yeah. What 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 are they trying to build? Right? Yeah. We have documents where we get those information. Like I believe we've created a document that has some details about our stakeholders the business goals and objectives. Do we have that? Yeah. Yeah? So yeah. you can see on this first end of our, our, of this diagram, we've covered that. So everybody's supposed to be aware of this, the background information. Yeah? Okay. And moving forward, we have what we call the process modeling or the process models. Yeah? which I think to some extent, the BAs would have created something like a process flow or a process map. Have we done anything like that, the BAs? Yes. Yeah? We know yes. what lane is, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so now we'll now move to the next, yeah? The functional models. Now, that might be an area that is still new to us because uh, these days, BAs don't do this anymore, yeah? But you might be asked to do it anytime, yeah, depending on your project, yeah? So that's the reason why um, they, want, um, they want this session, yeah? So basically, we're going to be looking at the, um, what's it called? Modeling requirements, because that's where the use case is focused on. Yeah. So if I go back to my first slide, we'll talk about a use case. What, what is a use case? A use case is basically um, a, a contextual 
diagram. Yeah. Like I explained here, the use case is just a diagram. Yeah. A behavioral UML diagram type frequently used to analyze various systems. Yeah. Uh, if I ask a question again, what is UML? Unified modeling language. Is that BA speaking? Oh, yeah, sorry. My name is um, Adiola. Are you BA? Yes, please. I like to know this because sometimes, if you notice here, I have a little dictionary here. I always do this, yeah, whenever, even when I'm doing my personal work, yeah, because when I have, say, um, let's say, for example, UML, sometimes I can easily forget what that is, what the meaning of UML, yeah? So what I do is I always write a little note on the side so that as I'm reading along, you know, I can relate to what that thing is. Well, basically, UML is a standard modeling language like you said, a unified modeling language is an acceptable, um, is an accepted modeling um, technique. Yeah. So a use case is simply a, a diagram that, uh, so to say, give context to what the function or the activities uh, you intend the system to perform, yeah? And the relationship between the interaction between the actors using that system. Now, a use case is also a high level diagram, yeah? But remember this, use case is focused more on functional requirements because again, you know, when you're looking at your solution, you're looking at your solution from two perspectives, um, the functional requirement and the non-functional requirement. So use case is focused on the functional requirements. That is what the system is actually doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've shown out this. This is basically something I just created to give us a little bit of context. Uh, now, if you look at this diagram again, you could see that a use case is here. Yeah? The behavioral diagram. We have a structural diagram as well, but we're focused. Like, for example, your user story, yeah? Text is the replacement of your use case, yeah? In those days, we do a lot of use cases when we are trying to um, document requirement. But these days, we just go straight right in our um, user story and acceptance criteria. But whichever the case may be, your user story and acceptance criteria is a more, much more detailed, granular um, breakdown of the requirement, why your use case is just, you know, it's high level sitting up there, just give context to what the um, business say they want the system to do. Yeah. So it's just the behavior of the, the system. So there are four elements, four major elements of um, a use case diagram the system, the actors, the use cases, and the relationship. Now, the system is what your project is all about. The system is what you want to build, yeah? And it's represented by this rectangle shape or block, yeah? So the system is anything the business wants to build, yeah? and Again, the system, it's not, you're building the system for people to use, basically. So that means 
the system also, the system cannot, can, the system requires people to, people are going to be using the system. So those people that are going to be using the system are the people that, are, are, are those that will tend the actors. The actors are those that are going to be using the system. So now we have two types of actors, yeah? We have the primary actors and we have the secondary actors. Yeah, the primary actors, they are usually at the left-hand side of the system, while the secondary actor on the right-hand side. Yeah? And the next element, important element, is the use case itself. Yeah? The use case is simply the action the system is going to be performing. Yeah, like we could see here on my left hand side. Can we see my cursor? Yes. Yes, we can see. So it's very, it's simply the action that the system is going to be performing. For example, here I said login. Yeah, or register. What's what's the nature of your project? Okay, you guys have different projects, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's say it's a website development project. Yes, what's it focused on? A learning platform. Okay, fine. So this will fit in very well. So the learning platform, that's the system, yeah, that you are building, yeah. That's a rectangular block um box. Yeah. Then the use case itself are the actions that the system is going to perform. Yeah. For example, the actor is going to log in. Yeah. Or is going to register or book a course or make payment. Those are the use cases. It can be more. This is just an example, but your example is going to be um, related to your project. Yeah, this is just something that I came up with, but I think it fits in to your learning management um, project. Yeah, so we can see on here, we can see the actor. Yeah, and we can see the system. And we can also see the use cases yeah so and the next important element in a use case is the relationship yeah which is this solid line yeah linking the actor to the use case it just shows relationship between the actor and the use case yeah and again there are different types of um relationship So before we go into the different types of relationship, let's look at this example here. The use case diagram for an ATM. Yeah, so you can see that we have an actor. The bank is an actor in this, in this case. Now remember, an actor can be a person, can be a machine, can be a thing, anything. Yeah, sometimes an actor can be time. Yeah, you know things that happens if you automate something, yeah, for that thing to, um, it needs probably as a result of time, it triggers an action. So that trigger can be, that trigger is time, is a time element. That can be an actor, but most cases you don't you don't use time as an actor. You you never get to see a situation where you use time as an actor. But sometimes people talk about using time as an actor. Yeah. So just remember, use case have four important elements: the actors, which can be a person or a machine, yeah, or a business or infrastructure, whatever it is, yeah, and the system itself, which is the boundary, yeah, the rectangle box, then the, the relationship, which is that solid line 
between the actor and the use case. Yeah, it just shows relationship. Yeah. Now, if you look at the second diagram here, also we can see for car rentals. Yeah, we could see the rectangle box, which is the system that we're trying to build. We could see all the actors, the left and the right. We can see all the use cases inside the box. And we can see the connection between the actors and the use case. Now, there's a question here. Why is it that all the use cases are inside the box, the rectangle box? And the actors are outside. Okay, it's simple. The rectangle box is the system that we are building. The use cases inside the rectangle box shows the activities, yeah, that the system is going to be performing. That is why all the use cases are inside the box. Now, the actors are outside the box because they are the one performing the use case. The reason we have the link, that solid line, linking the actor and the action, the, um, the trying to perform, yeah? Does it make sense? Okay, so still on relationship. We've talked about association, which is the solid line connecting the actor and the use case. So now we're looking at include relationship, yeah? Just like the solid line connecting the use case and the actor, and include relationship, yeah, is simply a relationship that happens every time an actor performs a task. Another case automatically, another use case automatically um, happens. For example, for an include um, relationship, we have a, a base use case, yeah? And every time an actor try to perform the base use case, How many? How many guys? Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Anytime an actor tries to perform a base use case, it triggers another action. For example. If you try to log in, automatically the system verifies your login details. Yeah. Now, there is the, the other relationship called the extend relationship, which is the opposite. Now, the difference is for an include relationship, yeah, it happens every time you perform the base use case. But for an exclude or extend re relationship, yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. For example, for an include relationship, every for when you log in, automatically the system verifies your login details. But for an extend relationship, if you log in, yeah, except your login details is not correct. Yeah, it triggers an error message telling you that incorrect um, login details, which you have to review. So 
the way you identify these two relationships is the direction of the arrow. Yeah? You can see there's a broken arrow. It's not like a solid line like the association. The arrow is broken. But for the include, it points forward. While for the exclude, it points backward. Yeah? Remember, the include happens all the time. Yeah? Whereas the exclude doesn't. I gave another example here talking about when you sneeze. Yeah? Every time you sneeze, there's a reaction. You close your eyes. We can't control that. Yeah? But again, every time we, we sneeze, yeah, we have that habit of saying, excuse me. Yeah? Sometimes people don't do it. Yeah? That's why it's more like an extend relationship, yeah? But closing your eyes is an include relationship because you just do it, yeah? You don't have control over that. You sneeze, you close your eyes, you don't have control, yeah? But you have control. Saying excuse me is, is under your control, yeah? It's a thing of choice. Am I making sense? I'm always afraid if everybody agrees. Yeah, so let's look at this diagram here. The use case diagram for an LI reservation. Let's look at it thoroughly and let's criticize it, yeah? I'll give us, say, like a minute. Let's go through it, yeah? And tell me what you think. Okay, that's fine. Do we have any question at this point? Somebody should just say yes or no. Yeah? No. So that means we understand what's what's happening here. But the SM, do we understand this? Yeah, SM should speak. Um. Yeah, seems reasonably uh okay. I hope it's not more you're speaking. Oh uh, no, it's me. It's me. It's kind of okay. All right. Uh, what about the APM? Is it making sense? Not sure. I understand completely. No. This is just theory. It might be different when you now start doing practical. But trust me, the practical is easier. Yeah? Okay. So we have another relationship called generalization, also known as inherit inheritance or specialized, specialized relationship. Yeah? It simply shows it's more like a parent-child relationship in the use case, yeah? If we can see in my left-hand side, yeah, we have the actor, the, or say the user, yeah? The user can, you can see the user can be broken down further to two, yeah? Old user, a new user. They are all the user, yeah? Then if we want to look at it from the, use case perspective, yeah? You can see we have payment, yeah? Customer should be able to make payment, yeah? That's a use case, payment, yeah? Now, payment can be broken down into two, just like we could see here, PayPal or MasterCard, yeah? So whichever case, because now you're trying to co conceptualize your idea in terms of 
your functional requirement, what the system is going to be doing. Yeah. You want your the business, the stakeholder, to actually get to understand what you're trying to build. Yeah. So doing things like this makes it easy for them to engage with you. Yeah. So if you if we look at this example on the right hand side, yeah, this is a library management system. Yeah. We could see we have the actors, the left, and our actors on the right, yeah? Now, the actors on the left, they initiate, while the actors on the right respond, yeah? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now, you can also see the users here are also broken down to, to students and staff, yeah? Because you're trying to break it, break, break it down further. So that the your stakeholder will understand, okay, who are the actors? Okay, you want to define who exactly the actors are. Yeah. So you can see the user are authenticates all these round boxes. Is it round or spherical boxes? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, oh, oh, oval. Is it oval shape? We call this. Yeah. Oh. All this boxes um circle you see they are use cases yeah you can see they sit inside the rectangle box the rectangle box is the system yeah so the connection between the user and the use case is very important so you are saying this use case wants to perform this action which is authenticate the use case want to reserve a book the use case want to request a new book the use case Sorry, the user, the user wants to renew the book. So all these are actions that the user are going to be performing. From the right side as well, you can see the librarian can add book item, can delete book item, can also edit. Now, database, where we know exactly database is not a person, yeah? can see what the database can do. Can send overdue notification, yeah? Can send reservation availability notification, yeah? So all these actions are what the actors um, are going to be performing with the system. Now, another relationship there is the include and the extend. So you can see the arrow, yeah? taking you from book, when the librarian, yeah, add a book to the library system, automatically, automatically, the catalog, the library catalog updates. So yeah, so that's why you see the arrow from the add book to update catalog, yeah? You can also see the same, when the librarian delete the book, yeah, the catalog is updated automatically. Yeah, is it making sense? Yeah. Okay. So if we look at it the other way, yeah, when the user requests a new book, yeah, we could see an extend relationship saying invalid renewal. Now, basically, it's more like an error message. Yeah, that means something is wrong. So uh, you need to review it. Yeah. So you determine what message you want it to be. Yeah. Here is invalid renewal. That's the message. That shows there's an extend relationship. Something is wrong. Yeah. It's just an indication that something has not gone. Something is not correct. Yeah. If you look at here again. The user authenticates, you get another response, invalid username or password. Remember, we are used to this anyway, yeah? It's an error message, yeah? You can see the relationship extend, it goes back. It doesn't happen all the time. Usually when 
you log in or you, 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 you authenticate your credentials, yeah? The system takes you to the next page, yeah? But in situation where you have an error message, yeah? That relationship is termed as extend relationship. So you use this arrow to differentiate your include and the exclude relationship, yeah? There's one more. Oh. Extension points. You hardly get this anywhere. Yeah? But it's just good to know. Extension point is more like an extend relationship. Yeah? But in this case, now we have a base use case. Yeah? Let's say our base use case is register. Yeah. Now to register, if you click register, most times when you want to register, you don't use the guide or you don't look out for um, terms and conditions, for example. Yeah. You just click and you enter your details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that relationship is more like um uh, 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 association, the actor register. But in the case where you click the register, for instance, yeah, or you uh, in this case where you want to register, but the first thing you do, you request for the guide. You click view guide so that you can um, have an understanding of what is required or how to register, yeah? Or you can request to view the terms and condition, yeah? That is more like an indirect action, which is more like an extended um, uh, extended uh, uh, relationship, yeah? So instead of clicking direct, yeah, you request the guide or the terms and condition to help you complete the process, yeah? Remember, extend relationship, yeah? Does not happen automatically, yeah? Extend relationship is different from an extension point in the sense that for an extension point, yeah, you perform an action, you want to perform an, an action, but you are not performing the action directly. Yeah? You are resulting to help. To help you complete that action. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make sense, just say it doesn't make sense. Uh, um, good evening. I'm lost. You're lost. You're lost here or before here? Here, totally, and then a little before here. Okay. I'll, I'll take us back here. I'll take us. You understand to the point where we have extended and include relationship. Extend and include relationship. Do we? Do you understand the extend and include? No, 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 I don't understand it. Okay, I'll take us back again, don't worry. Okay, do you understand what this rectangle box means? Yes, I do. Good. We understand the actors, right? Yes. Okay, remember the actor can be anything can be a machine, can be a person, yeah? I remember the actors on the left, yeah? And the actors on the right. The actors on the left, they, um, they initiate, while the actors on the right, they respond, yeah? Uh, so, where you're having challenges, they extend and include, right? Right. Good. Now, 
Put it like this. Every time you want to log in, what happens? System gives you access. Yeah, if your credentials are okay, the system will give you access, right? Yes. Yeah, so that means once you enter your um, credentials, your login credentials, automatically the system verifies it. Yeah, the system does not need your request to take that action. It verifies it automatically. Yeah, and if everything goes fine, you log in successfully, right? So that relationship between the action you are trying to perform, which is the login, and the system verifying your login details as a result of the action you took, which is that you're logging again, yeah? That relationship between that use case, which is the login, and the verification use case, yeah, is called include relationship. Yeah? Does it make sense? Yes. Then the opposite, yeah, is extend relationship. So every time you log in, yeah, and there is an error message. Now, because you are the one building the system, you are saying, okay, fine. Every time you log in and the credentials is not correct, you want an error message to be displayed. Yeah? Because you are the one building the system. Yeah? So this the, the system automatically reads that your credentials are not complete and you get the feedback, which is the error message. That relationship is called extend relationship. Does it make sense? I will say yes, but let me take you to the last part, yeah? So maybe this will help. Now let's look at this. Let's take two minutes. Maybe two minutes will be too much. Let's take two minutes. Let's look at this diagram here, yeah? And let's come up with any question you think you want to come up with. Anywhere you think you don't understand, just draw my attention. Yeah? After two minutes. Silence is golden. Okay, should I explain it? Or do we have questions first before I explain? Explain, please. Okay. Now remember, the system here we are trying to build, yeah, is um, a learning management system, right? That's the rectangle box, yeah? And the system is going, the system is meant to be used by someone. That someone is what we refer to as, or who we refer to as the actors. Yeah? So the actors are the people or the system, or sorry, the people or the machine that are going to be using the system that we're trying to build. Now, remember, the system is in the rectangle box. The actors are outside. So the actors are going to be performing an action. So the oval shape you see inside the rectangle box. Now, this rectangle box, yeah, is the system you are building, yeah? And the reason you have every other activity inside the system, it shows the boundary. Everything outside the rectangle box is out of scope, yeah? If you have a use case outside the rectangle box, then 
that's out of scope. So the focus is on every action you see inside the rectangle box. So we have the actors, we have the system, and we have the use case. So the use case are the actions the users are going to be performing with the system. Yeah? And these solid lines that you see linking the actor to the use case is the association. Yeah? Now, we have these different types of association. We have the one with the solid line, which you can see here. Yeah, basically those lines are interaction between the actors and the use case. Yeah, so we have the solid line here. For example, the actor on the left, this customer wants to register. Yeah, once the customer registers, the admin responds. Remember again, I said the actors on the left, they initiate why the actors on the right, yeah, they respond, yeah? You remember when you registered for this course, yeah? Admin had to send you some information. That's admin responding, yeah? Now, if you look again, the, the actor logs in. Automatically, the system verifies your login details, or let's say password as the case may be here, yeah? The system verifies it and automatically you gain access to the system, yeah? Because first of all, when you registered, you registered your credentials, yeah? So the system have already saved your credentials. So anytime you go into login, for instance, the system verifies your credentials, yeah? And it gives you access for you to use the system. So that relationship between login and verify password, that relationship is called an include relationship. The reason is every time you log in, the system automatically verifies your password. Yeah? Every time you log in, it's more like a complementary action that will take place once you log in, yeah? Now, again, once you log in and your login details is not correct, an error message is displayed, yeah? The relationship between your login and the error message that is being displayed is, is known as an extend relationship. Is it clear here now? 100%. Now, yes. what, what will be good for us to note is this. Includes relationship happens automatically. It happens all the time. While extend relationship doesn't. Yeah? It's more like one-off. Yeah? But you are building it as part of the system. Just in case. So you are telling us, okay, this is what will happen if this happens, yeah? Okay, so again, we look at a customer, yeah? The customer wants to book a course, admin verifies. The customer wants to make payment, yeah? Admin responds, yeah? Now, um, because the system is built to accept different types of payments, yeah? So that means payment, you, you just, you, only, you don't want to leave this, uh, you, you just don't want to leave the use case to say, make payment alone. You want to define the type or the method of payment, yeah? Now note this again. Every time you make payment, what happens? Your, the, the, the bank, there's a response from the bank, yeah? The bank would verify, or oh, sorry, um, 
the system will verify if you have sufficient funds. Yeah, that means that there's a response from a third party, which is the bank. I don't, I think I didn't add it here. Yeah, there's a response from the third party, which is the bank. There's another um, actor, the bank. Yeah. So you can see if you want to make payments, it's either you make card payments or you make bank transfer. As this case may be, you can decide when you are building your own to have multiple payment methods. Yeah, but in this case, we've limited it to card and bank. Yeah, I don't know your project, but you define what your project, what the business say they want. That's what you're going to you build. Yeah. So the customer makes payment. Yeah, you define the type of payment, maybe card payment, maybe bank payment. But however, whichever action you take, Whichever payment method you um, you use, there's an include relationship. Automatically, the system will verify if you have sufficient funds. Yeah. Now, to this point, do we understand it to this point? Um, sorry. Yes, I do. But what if um you don't have money in that specific um? That let's... is where. Yes, yeah. cool. okay. that is where you have that relationship, extend relationship. Okay. An error message will be displayed. Okay. okay. Does it make sense now? I was just wondering because it wasn't there. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to. I just built this just to show. Yeah. But you are going to do this is just to help us understand what we're trying to build or create. Yeah. You would define your own according to your requirement. Maybe this is my own requirement. Okay. Yeah. Now, remember, whenever things go through smoothly, yeah, you know when you're doing a process flow, we have, um, what's it called again? Um, happy path. Yeah. Everything yeah. goes smoothly. Well, in most cases, things don't go smoothly. So there is always an exception. So that exception is what we can assume to be an extend relationship. You understand? So for example, insufficient fund, an error message is displayed. That's an extend relationship. Yeah. So you, you, you create it that way so that the business will see that, okay, once there's no sufficient, if there's no insufficient fund, an error will be displayed. Yeah. Um, do anybody have questions to this point? I have just five more minutes. Yeah. Before I go down here. Yeah, so I, I've got a question actually. Go on. So I noticed um around the make payments that you know you have to choose between card and back transfer. The yeah. arrow there is typically different from other forms of relationship. Uh can you just um arrow this one? Yes. Now it's more like a child parents relationship. They are all forms of payment. But it's you see the arrow goes up. It just shows you it's under this, they are all payments. Yeah. What what I was trying to understand is that because it differs the this uh, this is a you know black fill arrow, yeah, different from other type. I mean, does that signify anything? Yes, this is just how will I put it again. There's something they call, I wouldn't say dependency. Yeah. I wouldn't say dependency, but this is more like dependency. The payment, this card, no, sorry, this payment depends. It, sorry, your payment method, yeah, depends on, I don't know how to explain that again, but. Let me see if I can rephrase it. Okay. Your payment, yeah, is dependent on any different methods that you want to use to make. They all fall under payment. Yeah. You can have more than three types of four, depends on how many you want, based on your, depending on your requirement. But they all fall within the category of payment. Yeah. So that's more like depend dependent. 
Does it make sense? No, I, I get you. Um, what I'm just looking at, um, and maybe within and outside the context of this particular example, mm. is you know, when drawing, you know, use cases and their relationships, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, when we are using extend is um you know, not a solid line, interrupted line with an arrow. But this particularly, I understand that making payments could be of two types. Um, do we use to this solid um, added arrowed um, line to, you know, explain the fact that there might be, you know, different methods to one action? Yeah, that's true. To understand. Yeah, that tells you this payment bank transfer card transfer is linked to what you have as payment yeah that tells you the direction all right then thanks yeah now remember again is a standard modeling technique yeah that means it's been approved so it's not that we're making any of this up, yeah? If you send this to, say, any technical person, once they read this, they, they can interpret it. But again, this is for you to be able to engage your stakeholder, yeah? That are not technical, yeah? So you're trying to show them this is what we are building. Now, again, the reason you're doing this is to help them understand what will be in scope. Yeah, because we can fit, do all this now and they will come up and they'll tell you they don't want say login use case. Yeah, or they might see something that they want to add. Like for example, somebody mentioned that I omitted um, an exclude, an extend use case, which is, that has to do with payment, yeah? If the, if the, um, if you do not have sufficient form, yeah? An error message should be displayed. I omitted it, yeah? In my own case. Now, in your own case, your stakeholder might tell you, they might want something like that, yeah? but I've done this based on my own requirement. But you're going to draw your own or map out your own or create your own based on your requirement. Yeah? Does it make sense? Usually this is where we have problem here, but you hardly have cases where you have to build this because the reason we're doing this use case, yeah? We want to make it as simple as possible. Yeah, because it's high level, there's no much details. But again, just for our for us to have an idea what this extend use case is. So you can see um, if I want to summarize this, I will say there have four elements of a use case: the system, which is the box, what you are building the actors, which you have actors on the left, actors on the right. And remember again, the actors on the, on the left, they initiate the actors on the right, they respond. Yeah, the use cases, which are the actions, this oval shape you see, yeah, the actions that you're going to be performing in the system and the relationship, yeah. The solid line, the include relationship, the extend relationship, and we also have the generalization, which is inheritance, yeah? Or the extension point. The extension point is a little bit complex, yeah? It's more like an in, in, um, extend relationship, but in this case, it's not like a direct action. It's an indirect action. That means for this example now, you want to set up your profile, yeah? You can as well click and set up your profile directly. But when you now require to, you now require 
or you request for help. Yeah, that means you are taking another step before you complete your task. That makes it extend um, extension point. Yeah, it's more like an uh, uh, extend relationship, but because again, for an extend relationship, it's more like a reaction. This extension point is not a reaction. Yeah, it's a deliberate act to click on here, to read this before you carry on your activities. That's where this one is a little bit um, complex. Yeah, your business might decide that they want something like this. It all depends on what you are reading um, from, from the information you are getting from your um, stakeholders to help you create this. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. So well, what I would say, if you do not do, if you don't um, exercise this, if you don't try to get your hands dirty with this, you might not know the kind of question you might want to ask. For example, you might think this is very difficult to create. It's not. Yeah. Once you understand the concept and you understand how to use the tools to create this, yeah, then you see that this is one of the most easiest diagram to develop. You can ask anybody. Yeah? One um, can say it's a roadmap that one can follow to a destination. Okay. See, again, that's another angle. Now, know what this is, this use case, yeah? It's, there's something called um, context diagram, yeah? is an expansion of a context diagram. A context diagram can simply be this actor, this actor, this action, which is the registration, yeah? And just this box, but in a different way. But the use case expands that, it opens that up. So they see everything going on in the system. Yeah. So what I would advise us to do, yeah, is to take some time, even if it's just 15, 20 minutes, just try. Do we have Visio? Or what tool do we have? Yeah, we have Visio. You have Visio? Yes. Okay, let's see if I can. Uh... Okay, so I have this, aha. Uh -huh. So you see, somebody asked me a question, yeah? About arrow, yeah? This is more like it. You can see I have depend dependency there, yeah? But anyway, that's not where I want to take you. I want to take us to, I'll share this with us. I'll share this, yeah? You can use this. The steps, yeah, play with Visio, yeah, to create this. But I'll show us an example. See if I still have, I have Visio here. Uh, my system, yeah. Can we see my screen? Can everyone see yes. my screen? Yeah. Yes, we can see your screen. Can we see Visio? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Um. What I'll do, okay. Let me create a fresh one. Let me show. Let me let me tell us what we can do. Yeah. Let me. Well, let me close this. Let me just close that. Okay. Anyway, once you open up your Visio, yeah. You. Let me start afresh, so that. Uh, so you can. Uh, Where's my video? One minute, guys. So you open your video, yeah? <laughs> open your video like this, yeah? So what you can do is either you click the blank page, yeah? You can see here, there's use cases because I used it. That's why it's up here, yeah? Or you come here where you have templates. You can click the templates. 
and come lots lots of them yeah yeah on um the search bar yeah you can enter use case search yeah it comes you have this yeah you can see uml use case basic uml use case now if you do not want to come go through this route yeah let's go back let's create a blank a blank page yeah we come here are we familiar with the use of visio first of all getting there slowly but surely yeah you come where you have more shapes you come down to um uh, think software yeah mm -hmm. uh, software yes so we can see they're all there okay yeah? you have use case depends on what you want yeah. to do you also have activity wow. you wow. also have class diagram but this is your focus yeah this is this uml class diagram is for the da's uh, sorry the da's yeah and okay. this activity diagram yes you the ba you do it it's more like your process flow yeah but just focus on the use case you click that for the ba yeah for the ba yeah but just play just play around it yeah and see mm -hmm. what uh, you can do they can be I think you should just go ahead and ask your question. Um, I'm not sure Emmanuel can see your hand. Oh, I can't see your hand. Sorry, Kemi, if you, your hand is up. Kemi, you can stop me anytime. Just ask me. Taiwo? Okay. She's not, um, she's, she's in the, she's, her hand is still up. But well, Kemi, you can stop me anytime, yeah? Just have a, We've gone past the time, yeah, but it's fine. Now, we can see the actors here. We can see the use case. We can see the system. In this case, it's subsystem, yeah? This video here is old, yeah? We can see association, generalization, extend, and include. There you can see the dependency. Usually, you hardly use this, yeah? You hardly use this. Yeah, so you can play with it. You can drag the system first. This is what we're trying to build. We give it a name. Say, Taiwo, because she's not answering. Taiwo system. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, what we can also do, we can open it up. Yeah? Let me let me increase the font size. Yeah, we can open it up. Then we can drag our actors. Yeah. Remember, left, right. Yeah. So we have the actors. Then we have a use case. How many use case? Yeah. Then we also have a link. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The same way, if you want to use the extend, depends on what you intend to do. You can see the arrow. Yeah. You have to be careful here. See the direction of the arrow. Yeah. If you want to use include, you still do the same. Yeah. Remember, include is automatic. It happens all the time to perform. Did I do? So you have to be careful. So anyway, guys, um, I will share those steps with you. Yeah. And um, you take it from there. Yeah. Does it make sense? You see, yeah. it's easy. Yeah? yeah. So you just be adding your. How to create your own. Yeah. But just play, play with it, yeah. play with it, you see. If you have any question, just uh, send a message. They will reach out to me, yeah? Um, 
think there's a question here, missing date. Um, nope. Um, Kemi, your hand is Olu Oluwa Fade Kemi Taiwo. Your hand is still up. But anyways, if you want to stop the recording and you want to ask me a question, yeah, I, I, I'll be here, say, in the next 15 minutes. But I don't want to keep anybody that don't want to be here. You can uh, disappear if you want. The session is over. Uh, I'll share that. I'll share that. Um, video. video. Yeah, I'll share. This, they, 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 they've recorded it, so they've shared the video. I'll okay. share this. I'll share this with us. Yeah, please. Do. Yeah, Just thank you. Yes, yeah. how to work on video. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, if you have any question, just reach out to me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank uh, you for your time. I'm most most, most appreciated for Kemi because I think I had has been off. I feel guilty now. You can stop the recording. Should I stop it?